Now in today's video, I'm showing you why you must learn how to argue with women and you have to do this strategically in order to create the drama, the tension, right? As well as from time to time, any sort of turmoil that she's looking for. Men who do not understand how to use this to their advantage will oftentimes get classified as boring. The woman is going to tend to follow her emotions, pull back and then leave. So what I'm going to be showing you today, step by step in today's video, how you can use this to your advantage and strategically do this to win. Now, with all that said, I have 100% full confidence that you will enjoy this video. So stick with me. Now today's MBT masculine behavioral technique celeb spotlight dude posts this in my community and he goes was at my cousin's wedding last night. Okay, that's good. He goes and the maid of honor took me home with her never in my wildest dreams. I would think that this would happen guys. I'm seeing results like this on a weekly basis inside of MBT masculine behavioral techniques. So what I want you to do is I want you to go down below after this whole presentation's over. I want you to click the link in the description and check out that end to end presentation that I made for you. It will totally change your life. Now today I'm going to be showing you why you have to learn how to argue with women. Yes, that is true. You have to actually bring the vibe of the argument. So that way she has something to hold on to when it comes to drama and tension or else she's going to think you're fucking boring. Okay. Most men when they get into relationships with women or most men when they're dealing with girls, girls look at them and they think they're cookie cutter, they're boring, they bring no excitement and then she has you figured out. So the first step okay, to doing this accurately, it's so funny, like nowadays men have to actually like be told and taught how to act like a cocky fuck when like literally 20, 30 years ago, this was just natural behavior. Okay, the key to this shit, you have to be at the cause of the arguments, never at the effect. So the typical dating narrative, if you watch all the influencers and the gurus and blah, 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 they say some shit like, Never argue with a woman or you're breaking your masculine frame. Yeah, that's true. If you're at the effect of the argument, meaning if she's coming down on you and you engage in that shit, you've taken bait, which we'll get to in a bit. But the key to properly arguing so she doesn't look at you as boring and look at you as a low value square that she can have at any time. The key is to be at the cause of the arguments, never at the effect. When you're at the cause of the arguments and you're never at the effect. Now it shows that you are in control. This allows you to be in control. Women like a man who knows how to stimulate elements of control. If you don't have this, you've lost your masculinity card. Like she's stripping you of your masculinity psychologically without you even realizing it. So you have to be at the cause. You can't be at the effect. What does that mean? That means that this allows you to not be emotionally attached to the outcome with her. So if you're the one who started the argument, if you're the one who started the drama, if you actually have an issue with her, which is something 99% of guys don't have the fucking balls to do is actually have an issue with a girl or even manufacture one just to fuck with her for a little bit. They don't have the balls to do that. If you do, you're going to be the one who's creating the tension. You're the one who's going to be, cre be creating the element of the chaos that she's actually drawn to. That's why she has to watch 30 episodes of keeping up with the Kardashians because most men are boring. So the goal Okay, is to get feelings of pleasure mixed with feelings of inadequacy. Okay, if you've been dating a chick for a while and you're sitting there with her and things are just stable, just understand that if she's the one to break that stability first, you're probably losing, which means from time to time you need to be sitting there. If she's in the passenger seat and you're driving from time to time, you need to be able to have the balls to just say the shit like God lately, you're just so fucking boring. You have to be able to say this. What's that going to do? Spike her anxiety, raise her blood pressure, wonder if she's boring you, wonder if she, you're, you're too good for her, wonder if all of a sudden she's not saying the right things. Now she's going to try harder to please you in bed. Now all of a sudden she's going to try harder to make it up to you. Why? Because you're willing to say it first. Like if you're able to do that and just say, God, you're just so fucking boring lately. Do you understand that most guys, they're so attached to the outcome. They're so pacing the future with that girlfriend. There's so much future pacing what potential marriage will look like one day and all this shit that women like hate them. Most women completely will despise the men that they're with after long periods of time. What you're doing is you're actually drawing out elements to make her perform 24 seven to please you. This is what a woman wants. What a woman wants deep down is to have such a strong emotional pull towards a man to have so much respect for a man to have so much love for a man that she wakes up every day and she makes it her mission 24 seven to please him. She'll think, how can I serve him today? How can I make his day better? What can I do to bring good behavior to brighten his day? The second your girl is no longer performing 
for you, you are losing that woman. Okay. Another thing you have to be very aware of is that if you and your girl are not arguing from time to time, because here's what you got to remember, if she does make an argument, she still cares somewhat because she's trying to see if you're emotionally detached from it, can argue back with her. Okay, verbally put her in her place where she feels feminine and she can still look at you like the stud or the cocky fuck that she thought that you were six months ago when you guys first met. Okay, that's what she's looking for to make sure that you've still got the balls. If your girl's arguing with you, it's still a positive sign that she cares. Why does she care? She's emotionally invested enough in you as a man to still give you effort, to put emotional effort and words into it. Either, okay, if you don't start the arguments, she will be. If she's starting them, she still cares. A very bad sign, if you guys are never arguing ever about anything, meaning there's no tension, that is a very bad sign. And it's very bad because you lost your fucking girl a long time ago and you just didn't realize that she's emotionally left completely. She doesn't even care enough about you to argue with you. Not only does she not even like love you as a man and a man to woman interaction, but she literally doesn't, she doesn't even care if she sees you or not by that point. She's just there physically. Keep in mind that woman left a long time ago. If your girl's not arguing with you or starting shit from time to time, you, you've you've lost and she's already exited in her mind rest assured there's probably another guy who's sleeping with her to be honest with you now she needs drama or you become boring that means you have to actually learn how to have some swag to you you got to look at her and say god lately you've just been so fucking boring what's going on okay you have to from time to time go seriously that's the trash outfit that you picked shrug your shoulders and go typical Typical shit, typical trash outfit, just like they do. This is the shit that they do. She's gonna wake up and say, seriously, you're just gonna go to work again? Okay, and then she's gonna slam the door. This is shit that women do. You have to, fe you have to fuel this before they do. If you don't fuel this before they do, you're gonna be in for pain. Now, keep in mind, this is easier if she has seen you wheel other girls in the past, meaning she knows you come from a point of abundance, or if she can see that you're not detached from the outcome, meaning that if, if you already have other girls on the side or if she's seen that you've been with women in the past, it makes it a hell of a lot easier to do this. Now, once you understand how you have to be at the cause of the arguments and never at the effect, here's what you gotta know. If she needs to bring the drama or the toxicity first, it's over. If she has to repetitively do this, where she's bringing the drama and the toxicity first, she's making arguments between you guys first, she has to keep instigating things, she's gonna start to see that this is a guy that she can control emotionally. So, say this with me. Okay, read this out loud with me. Women will always create unnecessary issues to stimulate them emotionally. One more time. Women will always create unnecessary issues to stimulate them emotionally. I don't care if she is a corporate office girl. I don't care if she's a good girl. I don't care if she plays video games 24 hours a day. I don't care if she sits and reads like her Bible at church 24 hours a day. I don't care what her background is. I don't care. All women will create unnecessary drama to stimulate their emotions. Women who are single, they'll do this with novels. Women who are single, they'll do this through watching Netflix series. Okay, it doesn't matter, but you gotta understand this. If she brings this first, if she has to bring the arguments first, if she has to bring the drama first, number one, you've bored her. Number two, she, ha she thinks that she has you figured out, okay? And then number three, she knows that you're already sold on her. Well, if she th thinks that you bore her, she thinks that she has you figured out, and now, all of a sudden, she thinks that you're sold on her, you are now signaling to her hypergamy that you're probably a lower value fit. Okay, because you don't have any balls, you don't have any arrogance, you don't have any bravado, you don't have any cockiness to you anymore. So when this happens between a guy and a girl who's dating, there's two roads. Okay, there's two roads that guys can go down. Here's my little road. I understand this drawing is really shitty, but just stick with me. Okay, road number one would be that you tease her and you antagonize her back. You actually be a man. So if she has a bad attitude, if she's creating drama, if you're able to just shrug it off and act like you don't give a fuck or even argue back with her and start to taunt her and act arrogant, yeah, that's gonna turn her on. She sees that you still have balls and you can still create the tension. However, 99% of guys don't do this. What most guys do is they get reactive. This is what 99% of guys do when she tries to start an argument, they get reactive. Well, what does it mean if they get reactive? Well, what that means is they start trying to please her. Okay, never, and I mean never under any circumstances, do you need to make it your job to appease her feminine emotions? 
you will never win. What, to think about any any time you've been dating a girl, to give me one example of a time where you were successfully able to change her fucking mind. It doesn't exist. You gotta understand, you can't change her mind. Your job is not to fix her. Your job is not to fix her emotions. She doesn't give a fuck. And the more you try to do it, the more you look like a little, you look like a clown circus who can be controlled. You're like a puppet and she just exercises one string at a time and you move accordingly. This is why she psychologically has the upper hand and the power. So never under any circumstances make it your job to appease her emotions or you're gonna run the risk of looking stupid. Now, most men get reactive. When you get reactive, this signals emotional attachment. Why does it signal emotional attachment? Because you show that you give a fuck. You show that you give enough to engage. You show that you give enough to invest. And she's gonna sit there and go, mm, look how attached he is. I got him. You know what? My Snapchat inbox isn't very full right now. I better start to take some sexy selfies. She's just sitting there going, you know what? My Instagram direct messages are just a little dry and I'm kind of bored of this dumbass. I think that it's time for me to post a bikini photo. And then you know what? You're gonna sit there and go, oh, why are you posting that? It's making me insecure. And then you're gonna look stupid again. That's gonna be completely over. So when, when you start to see these, th this for what it is, You'll start to see that arguments, all they are, if a woman instigates them first, is interest tests. This is why I'm sure, like, you gotta think about this. When a woman starts an argument, she's seeing if you're still interested. She's seeing if you're still interested enough to engage, okay? And what happens is the higher interest you show a woman, the more that you start to signal that she is above you. The more interest you show a woman, the more her interest drops. So arguments are interest tests. This is why I'm trying to get you to learn how to test women first, to learn how to make women qualify to you. You need to interest test them before they interest test you. Arguments are interest tests. So here's what happens. Men who take bait on these interest tests, she says off the wall comments, she, she says this shit in like a bitchy tone, and then his, his, he's backpedaling the whole time. But I, 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 didn't, I didn't do that. Oh, no, I didn't. That's, that's how he acts. They say some shit like, what, what do you mean? That, that's not true, what do you mean? He's trying to calm her down. He goes, what do you mean we, we don't get along? We get along good. Uh, 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 we, we get along good, what do you mean? Uh, Kayla, don't. Oh no, Sarah, don't. Jessica, don't. Blah, blah. This is how he acts. He said, oh no, 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 I, di I didn't mean to make you feel that way. I didn't mean to make you feel that way. Calm down. No, we can work this out, blah, blah, blah. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to show you this, what this looks like. This is the vocal tone these guys will say. This is the vocal tone these guys will act with. You can't do this. Okay, never take bait. So men who take bait, this is what happens. She throws off the wall comments, he backpedals, he turns pleasing. Now, the reason why I'm telling you to never take the bait is because men who don't take the bait end up winning and then you've passed the interest test. So what you need to do is you need to troll her back. If she's making statements at you, if she's like getting under your skin or trying to like purposefully be bitchy, you have to be able to troll her back. That means you say the things in a condescending tone. Here's something that women don't tell you. Okay, women actually get turned on when you insult them. If you insult them, if you say arrogant things, if you say things that are considered rude, women, this actually like arouses women when you say words that are vulgar, when you say words that are slightly or very much insulting, this turns women on, okay? Like women get wet for guys who demonstrate this type of shit. And the reason being is because it's implied higher value. Now, the reason why it's so drastically important to internalize these concepts as a dude is because you as a man, you have to maintain the authority in a relationship. The second you don't maintain the authority in the relationship is the second that she goes and she finds a guy who can. And the reason why it's so important to take on this attitude, right, of being cocky back to her or acting like an arrogant dickhead back to her. The reason is because power is indirect. So you don't win or you don't pass these interest tests by logically convincing her that you're correct because you're never going to win that way. You do it by showing lack of care. You do it by not giving a fuck what the outcome is, right? This is where you're actually detaching. And if you can get present in the moment and realize that your future is never guaranteed in a relationship or in life or with anything, your job, anything, you start to just really not give a fuck. You have to detach from that outcome. Nothing's guaranteed, okay? And the fastest way to make a woman want to dissolve an interaction or relationship with you is to show that you are extremely sold on her future. The second you show that you're extremely sold on her future, she's no longer sold on your future and who you are. Just keep that in mind. So you must learn to test women first. You have to like you have to actually qualify them to make them earn you. You have to make her earn you. If she doesn't earn you, she's not going to respect you. 
Say that one more time. If she don't earn you, she's not going to respect you. Okay? So when you do this, this turns women on. Because most, most men, they're so willing and so ready to just accept any girl that like when a girl actually has to jump through hoops to chase you, to please you, okay, this turns her on. Women want to serve and please a guy that's worth pleasing, which means you need to act like a boss or you're never actually going to be treated like a boss, which means to maintain the authority, you can never go deep in conversation. See, this is the thing. Men often, like what men will do is men will think that you win a woman over by talking to her about life and about you and about circumstances and about interests and all of this shit and they just don't care. Women aren't deep at investing in conversation. This is why like, if you hear words like stoics or philosophers or stuff like this, they're oftentimes men because men think deep. Women don't like to engage in that world, right? Women like things to be fun. Women like to play pretend. Women oftentimes her imagination is her fantasy land and if you can help facilitate that so it feels real for her, this makes her drawn to you. So this is why, okay, the more you stay surface level, you keep things playful, okay? You're the type of guy that she can just fuck around with in conversation. Women like things surface level. This allows you to engage her emotions and this is why women like fantasy. This is why, okay, they like their imagination to run. This is why they like to act and play pretend. The last thing she wants to do is sit down in all these logical conversations with you. So if you think that you can just be a boring, polite guy and keep things stable, you're screwed because she will naturally bring that feminine chaos and she'll, call, she'll bring those waves crashing in quickly. You can't do that shit. So all women respond to men who act this way. The men who are willing to say shit like this, like, God, lately you're just so fucking boring or I can't believe you picked that trash outfit so typical of you. If you're able to be that, if you're able to do that, if you're able to turn yourself into the guy who has balls and backbone, not even balls and backbone, you can play around with her. You can fuck with her just like you know that she's going to fuck with you. You're going to win. Okay. The good girl can't control what makes her panties soaked. And this is a thing a lot of guys have trouble understanding is that like attraction isn't like something that she can decide to be attracted to or not. It's hardwired into them. So that's why like when you go, oh, well, you know, my girl's different. She's going to want to sit at her corporate job and then come home to me and still talk about how work and office culture is like, dude, she doesn't care or want to talk about that at all. If she's with a man, she wants to be, to be a complete release from how the, the from the, the boring mundane structures of her life. Those boring mundane structures of her life don't make her feel good. It makes her feel sad. And since it makes her feel sad, she's looking for that pleasure. Okay. If she gets that pleasure from you, but then you're able to interject potential conflict and show that you're willing to take that pleasure away from her. Now you make her fall in love. Now her, now, now you're her whole world. Now, as soon as she gets home from work, all she's thinking about is what she can do to, to please you and to be with you. And then she does all the naughty things in bed and she does all the shit to make you feel like a man and all that shit that you're wanting to do. But you have to understand that this is all psychological. Women live in fantasy. Women live in play. Women like to play pretend. Okay. The only way that you can play pretend and the only way that you have good novels, the only way that you have good movies, the only way that you have good Netflix shows for them to sit and binge watch is you have to have conflict, which means in every conflict, there's a good villain, which means you have to actually understand how you can interject that aspect of being the villain from time to time too. Or she thinks that you're boring because if you have Superman without any kryptonite, it's going to be a very boring plot because all he does is save the day. Most guys, all they do is just save the fucking day. She doesn't want her day to be saved. Oftentimes she wants her day almost destructed sometimes just so she can feel something. Do you understand if you don't bring this, if you don't bring the argument first, if you don't bring the tension first, if you don't say the off the wall shit to make her pissed off, she's going to find a guy who does make her pissed off. And she's going to even be more sexually loyal to that guy than she'd ever be to you. If you like this video, hit the like button, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.